Right, right. No, it's a real challenge. Uh, I wanted to, much of the book is, uh, is very personal. I wanted to quote one passage that particularly moved me uh, that comes from your personal experience. Here's what you write. It might seem that desisting from work and other weekday activities on the Sabbath would make it harder to advance your career and would sour your relationships with coworkers, customers, or constituents. I worried about that too. It's true that after I was elected to my first public office as state senator in 1970 and began turning down invitations to political or community events on Friday evenings and Saturdays, people were puzzled, frustrated, and sometimes angry. But once it became clear that I was saying no as a matter of faith and consistent religious observance of the Sabbath, people were not just accepting, but respectful, even admiring. I wonder if you could share with us a bit some stories of that admiration, maybe particularly some from the 2000 uh, presidential, vice presidential campaign, uh, places like La Crosse, Wisconsin. <laughs> You're a very good interviewer. <laughs> so let me sort of start with a general statement, uh, which is obviously I grew up in America, I've lived in America, so my uh, experiences in America and my, I know that it's different from a lot of other places in the world. What, what I'm saying is that um, this is a generally uh, religious country. By that I mean to say, I saw a poll done by the Pew PEW Foundation a while back that said something over 50% of the American people say that they regularly attend a house of worship. Um, and uh, more than 90% uh, say they believe in God or some kind of higher authority. Um, so uh, God is running well ahead of any elected official, which is reassuring. So, I, so, there, so I, I say that as part of a context, which really goes back to the founding generation of Americans of respect for religion. You can see it in the founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, obviously the First Amendment uh, uh, guaranteeing religious freedom. Uh, and uh, the other thing working here, I believe, is a phrase that has meant something uh, for quite a while to Christians, hasn't meant as much to Jews, which is the Judeo-Christian tradition. I, I think that this is not perfect, of course, and there have been anti-Semitism and continues to exist in different ways, but uh, there are an awful lot of Christians in this country who feel that their history is tied, their religious narrative, though, though it obviously takes a big turn at one point, is tied to Jewish history, and particularly biblical history. And so I was operating in that context, so I think that's part of why the respect, so not, uh, for the religious observance. So maybe I'll start with one story, uh, and then I'll get to La Crosse. Uh, when I was running for the Senate in 1988, I was in a real long shot campaign against the incumbent senator, and um, about a week and a half before the campaign, I got a call from a friend of mine, his name is Con O'Leary, uh, he was then the Senate, state Senate Majority Leader, and he said, you know, I think you're going to win the election. And I said, that's good news, Tom, because right now, probably you, you and I are the only people who think I'm going to win the election. Why do you think I'm going to win the election? So he said, uh, to the story short, I went to visit my mother yesterday. She was there with three other Irish Catholic or Catholic ladies, and that was 88. George H.W. Bush was running against Michael Dukakis. I asked him, oh, there he was, as a Democrat, I asked him, we are going to vote for for president? They said, Bush, I tried to argue with them why they should vote for Dukakis. I couldn't convince them. So I said, what about the Senate? What about uh, Lieberman and Weicker? And my mother said, oh, I'm voting for uh, Lieberman. And the other women nodded their heads. And so he said, why, why is that so e easy a decision? And he said, my mother said, I like the fact that uh, Lieberman is a religious person and he observes his Sabbath. So who knows? Obviously, I didn't observe the Sabbath as a result of a, a poll or a focus group. <laughs> that I should blame on my parents and, and my rabbis. But So there's one example. The other one in 2000, this was a moment when the first place we went after the nominating convention was in Wisconsin because Alan Tipper Gordon does not, they, long before they knew I was going to be the candidate, they had scheduled 
a, uh, a steamboat ride down the uh, Mississippi. It was actually a wonderful three or four days. So we started in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, my own uh, Shabbat observance gave the campaign and the Secret Service a new <laughs> task, which was to find the closest place within a circle that I could get back to by sundown on Friday. And we went down the river, and then I left at a certain point to go back to La Crosse. Uh, La Crosse had one uh, synagogue, which was a combined Orthodox conservative reform. <laughs> uh, and um, so we walked to that show, that Shabbat morning, and it was really touching to me in Hadassah, and, and because the people came out of their houses to uh, greet us and to say good Sabbath. And it reminded me of, of a story I told in the book, too, about my grandmother, who was an immigrant, who, you know, went through the normal unease of being Jewish in Central Europe at that time. When she came to America and lived in Stanford, Connecticut, in this neighborhood, which was a lot of different nationalities, a couple of African-American families, it was a miracle to her that people would, when she walked to synagogue on Saturday morning, would say, we're good Sabbath, Mrs. Manger. And um, that, I had a feeling of a kind of circle when that happened in 2000. Um, perhaps I'll add just one more thing for by way of uh, American Jewish sociology. On the night when we flew to Nashville, uh, the night before Vice President Gore announced it, had selected me, he said to me that he had talked to um, several people about the vice presidential selection, both uh, Christians and Jews about whether America was ready to have somebody Jewish running on a national ticket, and, uh, or whether there would be still some an enough anti-Semitism that it would jeopardize his chances of getting elected. And he said his conclusion was that the fear of anti-Semitism among Jews was dramatically greater than the reality of anti-Semitism among Christians or non-Jews, and therefore he was free to make the choice uh, he made. I mean, I could go on with too many stories about this, but um, I always like to, when I'm answering this kind of question, say that the numerical results of the 2000 election, as distinguished from the electoral college, <laughs> show that Al Gore and I got a half a million more votes than uh, George Bush and Bill Cheney. And I don't mention that, you know, to relitigate the results, but just to show, though I'd be happy to. <laughs> just to show in the clarity of the numbers of an election how the presence of a, of a Jewish American on a national ticket, and one who I presume most people knew was religiously observant and Sabbath observant, didn't stop them from um, voting for uh, the ticket. I, I, I'm forgetting, I just had one final story from yeah. mind. Yeah. Al Gore said to me at one private moment during the campaign that, you know, he was he's a pretty religious guy, and he said, um, I, I regret so much that I, I didn't make a rule of uh, not doing politics on Sunday. Um, and he says, you know what, if we get elected, I'm going to start observing uh, the Sabbath on Sunday, <laughs> he said. Um, so, I'll watch the store on Sunday. <laughs> 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 watch it.